Hello, everyone, and welcome. We're happy to have you with us today. My name is Carrie Ferg, and I'm your host for Manta's Small Business Expert Series about tax preparation. Manta wants to thank Dave Hunt for generously donating his time and expertise on the subject, and thank you to Avalara for sponsoring this event. We hope you'll tweet about today's event using hashtag MantaExpert. We'd like to start this presentation with an introduction from Manta's Vice President of Marketing, Sarah Oakhurst. Here's Sarah. Hello, everyone. Uh, so small business owners have to wear many hats, and like it or not, sales tax preparation is one of them. Businesses that sell taxable products or services need to collect sales tax and remit that tax to the state or states where they're doing business. But rules vary, and there are more than 15,000 taxing jur jurisdictions across the nation. So things can get very complicated if you sell in multiple states or do business online. Today, our guest expert, Dave Hunt, is going to cover everything you need to understand about sales tax compliance. Now back to Carrie. Thanks, Sarah. In case you missed it earlier, I'm Carrie Ferg, editor at Manta and your host for today's webinar. I want to take a few minutes to cover some important housekeeping items about the event. Let's first talk about your screen. During the webinar, you should see a slide area, which will allow you to view the webinar. On top of the slide area are three tabs, Ask a Question, Attachments, and Rate This. Click on Attachments to view articles and links related to text preparation, and rate this to give us your feedback about today's webinar. Click on the Ask a Question tab to ask a question anytime during the webinar. We'll do our best to respond during Q&A at the end of the event. If you're having technical difficulties, please email webinarhelp at manta.com. My colleague Graham is answering a technical question, so just send him a note. Okay, let's get down to business. I'd like to introduce our guest expert today, Dave Hunt. Dave Hunt is a regional manager with Avalara, where he specializes in helping small businesses with sales and use tax compliance, returns management, and 1099 compliance. Before joining Avalara, Dave has worked in the financial services industry. A graduate of the University of Washington, Dave is a Washington native and spends his free time in the great outdoors. Here's what we have planned today. First, Dave is going to talk about the landscape of sales tax compliance. Then he'll cover five key sales tax issues facing business owners. And then he'll finish with an overview of how you can use technology to automate taxes. Ask your questions using the Ask a Question field any time during the webinar, and we'll do our best to answer them the last 15 minutes. Now I'm going to hand it over to Dave. Hi, I hope everyone can uh, hear me this morning. Thank you, Carrie, for the introduction. Um, we'll try to make this as engaging as and informative as possible uh, for business owners. Uh, so let's jump right in. So states are still recovering from the recession. Uh, their focus on sales tax remains at the forefront. Uh, they, of course, have services and programs to deliver to their constituents, and those programs are paid for through sales tax collection. Uh, it is a business's responsibility to collect and remit those taxes. States are taking action to review their tax laws, what's taxable versus what isn't, and they, of course, audit businesses to ensure that these revenues are being captured. So sales tax provides critical revenue for states. Other than property and income tax, sales tax is the largest source of tax revenue in the majority of the 45 states plus DC that collect it. From a government operations perspective, making sure each and every sales tax dollar is collected through audits, fines, penalties, and well-developed rates and rules is simply good business. Therefore, recovering uncollected sales tax revenue through greater oversight makes perfect sense especially given the revenue shortfalls of recent years. It's easy to see why sales tax is a major source of funding in state budgets and uncollected sales tax is on the radar of budget strapped states. After all, wouldn't you rather be a politician who recovers uncollected funds from exi existing tax streams rather than one who votes to raise taxes? Of course, the historically large budget gaps faced by states during the recession only increase the need for sales tax collections. As we can see from the chart from the U.S. Census Bureau, 
General sales taxes provide nearly a third, on average, of a state's budget, second only to individual income taxes. If you add in selective sales and gross receipts taxes, which include things like motor fuel sales, alcohol beverage sales, insurance premium sales, tobacco product sales, and amusement sales, the total collection of sales taxes comprises nearly half of an average state's budget. So what are states doing about this? Well, for one, they're hiring additional auditors. California, uh, throughout the last few years, has hired over 100 new auditors. Um, Idaho has also followed suit. And Washington, I'm, the state that I am currently live in, uh, has hired 40 auditors recently to go after purchases from our neighboring state, Oregon, which doesn't even have sales tax. And the key component here is auditors aren't just located in their state. Uh, it's not uncommon for a California auditor to be up in Washington auditing businesses here that do business in their state. So how are states finding more sales tax revenue? Well, the first and, first and foremost, the list of business activities that creates a requirement to collect and remit taxes, Nexus, which we'll talk about here in just a moment, that list is growing every year. Secondly, more industries and products are being classified as taxable. So it's important as a business to be aware of these changes and stay up to date on the taxability research. Okay, so let's jump right in. We're gonna talk about the five key issues to consider as a business owner. The first, and this is the most important thing to consider, is nexus. And that's where should you be collecting sales tax? So Nexus was clarified uh, in a Supreme Court decision in the early 90s, Quill Corp versus North Dakota. North Dakota attempted to require Quill Corp to collect and pay seller's use tax on sales shipped into the state. So their catalogs, their flyers, um, floppy drives, if, if you all remember those. Quill Corp was incorporated in Delaware. It didn't have a physical location, North Dakota. None of its workers were located there. But out of this decision, Nexus became defined as having a connection between a state and a business predicated on that relationship being a substantial physical presence. So what does substantial mean? Substantial is having an office or a warehouse, having employees, having a contract sales force or installers, um, and if you visit a state on a regular basis. Now, what does the future look like? Well, there are things like economic nexus, which is becoming more popular 